Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Let's Talk Arsenal series. However, this is a little bit of a different show, of course, because I am premiering this live at 8am tomorrow morning, although you're listening to it right now. Uh, apologies that there's no normal uh, transfer show today. I am working again, but again, I did not want you to go without this morning. And so I prepared a little bit of a, a different show. In fact, this is going to be a guide for all Arsenal fans going into the January window. Look at the, the key links that Arsenal have had to players outside of the club and links with players within the walls of the Emirates Hale End and, of course, Arsenal's London Colney training ground outwards and to look at kind of the areas where we could see players leave in the window. And so I hope you enjoy it and do please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. If you're new around here, which I'm sure plenty of you still are, so please do make sure that you are helping to support the channel as much as feasibly possible. We kick off oh, by kind of setting the scene by hearing what Mikel Arteta has had to say about the opportunities that will befall uh, Arsenal this winter. He says, if you can tweak what you need to in that period, which is not easy, it would be really helpful. We are working on that to see if the necessities we can have and whether we can find the right solutions. Now, Arteta there is basically being very political uh, and uh, reserved in his description of how he wants Arsenal to behave during the January window. But what I think this means is that, you know, you can't rule anything out and you can't rule the idea that players could both leave and join the club. And so we're going to kick off by looking specifically at the players in the youth side that could yet leave the club. We start with Omar Rekic, who has been called up to the Tunisian national side for the African Cup of Nations. But should they get knocked out earlier in the competition, which I believe the earliest could be on the 18th, around the 18th of January, leading to the 20th of January, uh, then he could use a move elsewhere. Now, it is understood that he is among seven, nearly eight players that could yet leave the club's youth ranks on loan. The next is Ryan Alaviosu, who plays as a right wing back, but can play as a winger, has been playing on the right-hand side of Kevin Betsy's 3-5-2-1 formation at times, or rather 3-5-2 or 3-4-2-1 uh, formation at times. The other is James Olyinka. Another player that has been, I believe, away before, followed by Ben Cottrell, who's suffered with quite a lot of injuries uh, during his time at Arsenal. The next is Tim Akinola, who's formed a very strong partnership with Charlie Patino and uh, Salah Dean in the Arsenal midfield, but can also play as a centre-back. Uh, Zach Swanson, a right-back, and can play slightly further forward into midfield, has shown to be a very, very solid attacking uh, kind of fallback for Kevin Betsy's side this season. He also could yet leave the club. And the final and eighth player that is a little bit uncertain is Kido Taylor Hart. Now, his future rests upon Arsenal's kind of squad depth come the end of the window. He's thought of as one of the highest regarded talents in the academy, so much so that the club could even hold him back in order. Uh, to protect kind of the depth should there be following cases of positive tests or an injury crisis that can't be dealt with of a late kind of buy in the market. So he could yet stay to cover possible options, but he is also being regarded as a player that could yet leave on loan in January. Moving to the, the main outs, though, of the senior squad, we begin with the strikers. Pierre Mikabamiang, following Balogun, and Eddie Nketiah. Alexandre Lacazette not on this list, expected to stay until at least the summer, but Aubameyang has been linked with Barcelona. However, the most likely link is Juventus, who have again emerged as the main candidate were he to leave. Following Balogun, however, as, I mean, a lot of clubs interested, but the main notable ones that have been named are Middlesbrough, Swansea, Millwall, and Saint-Étienne. Uh, teams are obviously in the championship and abroad. A move abroad could actually do but follow, uh, following Balogun quite well, I think, in the window and, and see some really good experience earned in, in senior setups and playing in one of Europe's elite leagues, which is Liga is considered one of. So possibly a good move there. But he is expected to leave the club on loan with his long-term future, having signed that new deal very much at Arsenal. Eddie Nketiah, however, has received interest from in three main English clubs, West Ham, Crystal Palace and Brighton, but has also garnered interest from specifically Germany with Bayer Leverkusen and Schalke, both said to be interested in signing Eddie and Ketia and taking him on. And with Arsenal's interest in a certain Bayer Leverkusen striker, Eddie and Ketia could possibly be used in a player plus cash deal, which we'll come on to in a second. The other main players that could be set to lead the club this January are Sarah Kalasanac, who could 
mostly looks like he's going to be off to Watford. Uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, who's been linked with a low move to Roma, which could include a buyout uh, and uh, a buy option in it between the range of 10 to 15 million euros. And Pablo Marie, who's been linked with a, a move re returning to Flamengo. So they're kind of the main options of players that could yet leave in the January window. Others like El Nenny, whose contract expires at the end of the season, is still expected to stay until the end of the season. Um, but they're the main links. Balogun, though, there are a whole host of clubs that are interested in him. But the four we've gone through there are the main notable options. Moving into the striker targets that the club could look to bring in. Yes, the fun bit of the show. I say fun, possibly the most frustrating part of the show when we see nothing ending up happening. But in regards to the players that we've been linked to, the Athletic has named Dusan Vlaovic, Alexander Rizak and Jonathan David of Fiorentina, Real Sociedad and Lille, respectively, as Arsenal's main striker options. However... Vlaovic in particular, as we know, as reported by Demarcio, is not seemingly too keen on a move to Arsenal. Alexander Izak and Jonathan David are seen as more approachable, accessible options. However, all three will likely move in the summer rather than the January window. It would take something quite miraculous for a move to take place this winter, but they have been linked in the meantime. Meanwhile, Dominic Calvert-Lewin remains very much an option, according to The Mirror, who's reported him as one of their main targets, a, play a player that they will probably look to pursue if they don't get one of those three in the summer window. Uh, Yusuf Nezri has been reported by ESPN to be a target of Arsenal in January as well. Uh, and Patrick Schick, according to 90 Min, is also another player of Bayer Leverkusen, hence that link with Eddie and Ketia. Possible rumours of a player plus cash deal you can probably expect to see should Leverkusen step up their interest in Eddie and Ketia. And then second to last is Luka Jovic, who, according to Defensa Central, is a Spanish outlet focus on, uh, focused on Real Madrid news, claimed that he would be available for loan and Arsenal was said to be one of those interested parties. That could be an option that Arsenal look to just to provide them some depth and strength in depth in that striker position for the rest of the season with then their main move for one of those three strikers that the Athletic Report Arsenal were interested in happening in the summer. And then lastly is, uh, is Janis Stoika, who is a young Romanian striker playing for F, uh, FSCB. Uh, or FCSB, always get those the wrong way around, Football Club Stel Bucharest, uh, and Gigi Bacali, who is the owner of the club, actually, himself came out and said that an offer has been made by Arsenal for the young Romanian striker, but that was a fair few weeks ago, and nothing has really kind of, you know, followed on or developed since that point, so... That one's gone quite quiet recently. Now, central midfield is the other area that Arsenal look like they're going to be targeting. And regarding those possible targets, we start off with Matthias Svanberg, uh, a player who is of Swedish nationality and currently playing for Bologna, the side that Arsenal signed Takahiro Tomiyasu from. Il Resto del Calino in Italy are the, uh, the outlet to suggest that Arsenal are one of a number of clubs interested in him. Spurs are also said to be a notable option for the Swedish midfielder. Renato Sanchez, according for Fabrizio Romano, has been interesting Arsenal for some time. He was on a list of targets in the summer alongside the likes of Hussein Mawar. The interest has not gone away, but the likelihood of a move for him in January is probably quite slim. Regarding, though, Dennis Zakaria, the Borussia Mönchengladbach player that, according to Fußball Transfers in Germany, is of interest to Arsenal. Six months left on his deal. It was confirmed by Gladbach ever so recently that he will definitely be leaving the club on a free in the summer, but Arsenal could jump ahead of the queue and look to bring him in for a fee this winter, if they so please. And then finally, Tuta Mercato in Italy have claimed that Artur, the Brazilian midfielder from Juventus, is said to be a linking uh, in, in a move to Arsenal as well. There are a number, a number of other midfielders that have seen some loose links, the likes of Jeannie Vinalden, for instance, with a possible loan move from PSG. Jack Wilshere, we know, of course, as a player training with Arsenal, who knows he could see uh, possibly a contract offered. Another Juventus player in Aaron Ramsey has been linked in the past as well. There has been a number of players out there linked to Arsenal. Tyler Adams too, all those those links have gone very quiet. But these four are the main ones that look if they, any kind of move is going to happen these ones look the most likely at this moment in time. Then finally, other targets that don't specifically relate to a specific position. We've got Noah Lang, who was previously uh, mooted to possibly be moving to Arsenal by Vertbal uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, I believe. But playing for Belgian side Club Bruges, 
A winger can play centre forward as well. Young guy hasn't been linked for for a little while, but there was some strong links coming out earlier October, November time. Uh, Tarek Lamptey, very recently, according to uh, Duncan Castles of the Transfer Window podcast, has been claimed that Arsenal are exploring the possibility of signing the Brighton right back. And finally. We've got uh, Kulisevsky, the Juventus winger. And according to Gazeta Telesport, Arsenal again linked with him with a possible move. Although Bayern Munich's recent interest could scupper a possible deal if Arsenal want to pursue him. So regarding kind of what this means overall, what I would be expecting Arsenal to complete and compete with in, um, in January, I think that Arsenal are going to try and utilise the loan market. I think that's going to be uh, the main part of where Arsenal push forward with their deals. I don't see big signings being made. If there is a signing to be invested in, it's probably going to be uh, the, the likes of Matthias Fanberg, who would only cost between 15 and 20 million euros. That's what the type of moves that you will see. It's going to depend on who leaves, especially in the striking department. If we lose Eddie Nketiah, if we lose Pyramid Bamiang. You would expect Arsenal would then move for a striker. Same with midfield. If Ainsley Maitland-Niles does end up leaving for Roma, which does look quite likely, to be fair, it would be strange if Arsenal didn't go in and sign a central midfielder. And going all the way back to the start of the video, Mikel Arteta, of course, saying that they're working, they're trying to do some things. So I do expect Arsenal to make a signing. I just don't know whether or not it's going to be the, the, the shining light of Arsenal's future, but more so probably providing strength in depth to either the central midfield or striking positions. But it's set to be a very interesting January window. We'll be providing you with constant updates on the January window's progress, doing our shows at 8 a.m. every single day as much as feasibly possible. We'll also be doing all the reactions as usual to all of the Arsenal games throughout that period. Some very big fixtures against Manchester City, Spurs, two legs against Liverpool in the League Cup semi-final and a trip uh, for Burnley to arrive at the Emirates as well, which we'll have to navigate to. Plenty to go on, plenty of stuff that's going to be happening. It's all going to be happening and covered here at the Guna Talk. So make sure you subscribe with those notifications turned on so you can keep up to date with everything that's going on i'll see you soon have a fantastic day and i'll see you very very soon as always up the arsenal